Welcome back to our chronological Bible reading. I'm so glad you've joined us today as we're going to be reading the very last part of the book of Proverbs. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Summerdale Church of Christ, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. You might grab your Bible, go ahead and open up to Proverbs 29, and maybe want a notepad or some paper so that you can take some notes. I always encourage people to get a highlighter or a pen so they can make notes in their Bible as well. Let's begin reading together Proverbs 29. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads out a net for his feet. By transgressions, an evil man is snared. By the righteous, sings and rejoice. The righteous considers... The cause of the poor, the wicked, does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers see a city aflame, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there's no peace. The bloodthirsty hate of the blameless, uh, but the upright seek his well-being. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants will become wicked. Poor man and the oppressor have these things in common. The Lord gives the light to the eyes of both. The king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the richest will see their fall. Correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give you delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There's more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgressions. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth. He reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be safe. Many seek the ruler's uh, favor, but justice for a man comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way of an abomination to the wicked. Chapter 30. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, his utterance. This man declared to Ethel, and Ethel to Eucal. Surely I am more stupid than any man, and I do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and be found a liar. Two things I request of you. Deprive me, not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you, and I say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be found guilty. There's a generation that curses its father and doesn't bless its mother. There's a generation that is pure in his own eyes, it's not wasted or washed from its filthiness. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There's a generation whose teeth are like swords and whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters, give and give, There are three things that are never satisfied, four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that's not satisfied with water, and the fire never says enough. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yes, four, which I don't understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. 
This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is perturbed. Yes, for four I cannot bear it up. For a servant, when he reigns, a fool, when he's filled with food, a hateful woman, when she's married, and a maidservant who succeeds her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they're exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk. Uh, they, they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with, with its hands, and it's in the king's palaces. There are three things which are majestic in pace. Yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion, which is mighty among beasts, doesn't turn away from any. A greyhound, a male goat also, and a king whose troops are with him. If you've even been foolish for exalting yourself, or if you've devised evil, uh, put your hand on your mouth. For as the churning of the milk produces butter, and the wringing of the nose produces blood, so forth the wrath produces strife. Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It's not for kings, O Lemuel. It's not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and they forget the law and pervert justice to all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who's perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of those who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so so he will have no lack of gain. So does she does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She seeks wool, wool and flax and working willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships who brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp doesn't go out by night and stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand upholds the spindle. She exalts her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid to for snow of her household, for her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are in her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So glad you joined us today as we now conclude our reading in the book of Proverbs. We hope and pray you'll join us again tomorrow as we start my favorite Old Testament book, the book of Ecclesiastes. Until the next time, have a blessed day.